Welcome to the Taxing Subjects Podcast. I'm Ryan Norton. Now today we're discussing Drake Accounting. Drake Accounting is Drake Software's full-scale accounting product and it makes sense this time of year. People are evaluating their tax prep software, they're earning CPE, and for some offices they're looking at maybe getting a new accounting software. So to join me for this discussion is Drake Accounting Development Manager, Jay Eager. Sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, welcome back to the studio it's there, It's good Jay. to be back. It's good to have you. Let's not call it a comeback, but yeah, this will be our third podcast. It's our third one. It's a good deal. Um, and basically every year we do try to do kind of a an update, right? Like Absolutely. What is the most recent development in uh, Drake Tax, Drake Accounting, yep. and... Um, we have several things to talk about. I know you've got a lot of exciting We're stuff excited. to discuss. Yeah. yeah. This is so we'll just jump into us. it. Absolutely. Uh, Jay, could you talk about uh, maybe the payroll side of Drake Accounting? What's new for 2020? Yeah, absolutely. Payroll is, uh, of course, what we kind of hang our hat on uh, in the accounting product. It is the, you know, the bones of the modern product come from write up. Write up was always strong in payroll, strong on forms. Um, and we have put a lot of effort over the past two, actually three development cycles. Um, we do we cover the full range, but payroll has been our focus. Last year, uh, we brought multi-location. Uh, customers would probably uh, identify multi-state payroll. I was going to ask that. We yeah. call it multi-location for a reason. Um, in an increasingly global world, you do find folks working out of state multi-state working between states we're in a tri-state area quote unquote i know those are all over america oh, yeah. i was recently in cincinnati and heard the tri-state area and i thought oh we have one of those mm -hmm. <laughs> but we did we went and did our first accounting sales seminars there uh, in cincinnati and we specifically targeted that region due to the local taxes mm -hmm. uh, there and of course across the river in covington kentucky so you've got true multi-state with some localities thrown in so that all came to bear this past year and has been running great. I mean, we're just pleased as punch. But we figured, um, and we want to put the icing on the cake, so to speak. Not that you're ever done in payroll. Uh, wage laws change, labor laws change. You have to stay current, forms change. Uh, but we saw, I think primarily our concern now is ease of use. So of course for us, the big three, accuracy, job one. If it's not accurate, walk away. Speed, performance, uh, job two, and a close third, sometimes interchangeable, frankly, to the, to the speed, uh, is ease of use. So we heard from a lot of customers, of course, they love the value um, at our price point. You just can't get multi-state, multi-location payroll. It's unheard of. Um, but inside of that, uh, there's still a lot we can do for ease of use. So one of the biggest things coming online, and we're in late stage testing right now with the Social Security Administration, is we are going to bulk e-file uh, W-2, W-3 to the SSA. So we have this today uh, with the IRS. We enjoy this on the 94X side. Right. Customers love it too. They have hundreds of clients. They can uh, calculate their tax liability and then they just upload all that in mass to us. We send it off to the IRS. We get acts, rejects, and pass those back. So we're doing the same thing now with Social Security Administration which is an interesting step for us, a big step for us, uh, and a powerful new feature, and frankly, a time saver. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the, the biggest things happening. Drake Software is about longevity, mm -hmm. uh, I think both for employees and in our customer base. Um, so as such, uh, what we're doing, a lot of new features are rolling out these days. Uh, we roll out first to those beta users, to the traditional, the first adopters of our new software. Um, so folks who've come to previous developer uh, preview classes, um, folks who are part of our release candidate uh, who adopted during the year zero last year in 2018. So they get to see some of these features first. Um, one of the biggest new features, uh, I think for ease of use, uh, is recipient level logins to our portals so that employees can go get W-2s, go get pay stubs, that sort of thing. Um, the portals is already a big time saver it's where employers can go and fill out payroll. Um, that offloads that data entry from the accounting firm to the employer. And of course, prevents re-key re mistakes. So if you um, kind of fat finger somebody's pay rate, and that's not a good thing, it offloads that responsibility to the employer. 
Um, we're doing a lot of other more fine tooth refinement uh, in payroll, uh, speaking of time savers and speaking of payroll. So we have a batch payroll system. So if the accountant wants, wants to keep the data entry in house, but have that go a bit quicker, we have a batch uh, uh, method of loading in payroll data. That now is gonna have the ability to save partial batches so you can save and come back much like you can in bank reconciliation, which is nice. Um, and another oft requested by the user feature uh, is the ability to go filter. So if you just wanna do a batch for your hourly employees, you wanna go do a batch of payroll for salaried officer salary, that sort of thing. So we're layering in, I would say, ease of use right now, features to our to our payroll system. And frankly, we're excited. The multi-state, multi-location payroll has really taken off. It's performing reliably well, yeah. so we couldn't be happier. Um, I guess a few wrap-up things on that. We are globalizing our pre-printed check designs. Um, another time saver and frankly just for consistency so as you import from uh, the current year product into 2020 you'll have an option to globalize check designs and have one or two designs for all your clients instead of having to set those up manually for every client that sort of thing a um, few other minor things and then some not so minors we are bringing more direct deposit options to the table that is definitely by user request so we're going to get there so basically what this you're telling year. me is that that uh, direct accounting developers listen to. We do, the customers. absolutely. We're the smaller player in the market. It is truly a David versus Goliath. Um, this is how we get ahead, by being responsive, um, by listening. We do this every year, uh, and this year is, is between you and I and I suppose the rest of the world the first yeah. year. I'm just flat excited to go in and do a developer preview. This will be our third annual. Um, the first one was in 2017 as we were prepare, as we were launching our release candidate um, and it was it was daunting a an inaugural anything is going to be a new experience we're not speakers we're not salesmen <laughs> we just get into I think you're doing to make right this now, happen though. yeah we, yeah, we, we try okay. um, 18 we did a we did a lot of heavy lifting and so when we came to the table there was uh, you know we pulled in the parking lot with nothing left in the tank this year is the first year we've we feel uh, at or ahead of schedule so we're layering in nice bonus features and one i can i suppose unveil right here uh, we said in the printed material 2020 will bring enforcement of state level minimum wages uh, the software currently enforces uh, department of labor minimums mm -hmm. so you can't pay somebody two dollars an hour <laughs> Uh, it will automatically adjust up to minimum wage. Now, you can turn that off. I can't recommend it, but we do fully featured software, so you're the driver. Um, but this year, and again, by customer request, we have state-level minimums, and I'm pleased to say that as of last week, we are now testing uh, local minimums. Now, this is an important distinction, and you say, what in the blue blue blazes are you talking about? State-level minimums do get tricky. Uh, you have some states who have different minimum wages depending on whether a company offers insurance. Right. So if you offer insurance, there's one minimum. If you don't, minimum wage is higher. But there are a lot of uh, local <clears throat> minimums, and one specific example would be, say, at an airport where the minimum wage right there at that location uh, is higher than the state or indeed the federal minimum wage. So we have, after a lot of thought, come up with a pretty easy way to add enforcement for local minimums. It may not apply to everyone, but for the folks directly affected, it's a it's a big it's a big feature we're rolling out. So yeah. now you mentioned at least two features that have been implemented as a result of feedback from customers. Let's just assume I'm a customer and I want to provide Jay Eager yeah. some feedback. Where do I go? What do I do? Email me. No, I'm just kidding. Please don't. <laughs> His email is. Do. No. <laughs> but uh, I can't guarantee you you'll get a timely response. I'm just one person. Um, the best, really, to be honest, the best way to get visibility in our development um, is to come to our developer preview class. So we're doing a, an accounting 2020 developer preview here in Franklin. This year, it is right around the corner, October 23rd, 4th, and 5th. The leaves, the leaves are changing. I can't think of a better place to spend vacation and earn 24 CPE credit hours. <laughs> Good for NASBA and Texas Board of Accountancy. It is uh, accounting software instruction, not tax software instruction. Still invaluable. Um, that would definitely be the most direct route. 
we train, we teach the entire product, but the focus, heavy focus on the new features, and we have we have a lot of those this year. We also do a breakouts in the afternoon, so if you have a particular area of concern or you just want to touch base and, and really focus in, we, we kind of divide up our uh, auditorium into sections, and so folks can go and actually discuss their specific concerns in a small group setting. Um, the class, we try to keep the class relatively small uh, to begin with, and we do, we do have a good ratio of staff to, to folks there, customers. Uh, but the small breakouts are even more hands-on. So if I'm trying to sign up for this class, you mentioned it's a smaller class. How many heads are in each class? How many people? We generally keep between, say, 25 to 50. Uh, the largest class was the inaugural one, and it was 94 folks. <laughs> Um, so we've scaled that back a little bit, a little uh, bit just to be sure everyone's heard and we get the yeah. time we need uh, with folks. But like I said, folks who've come to that class are part of our, uh, our, our preview, our focus group. Mm -hmm. So they get circulars, bulletins, emails that the general public doesn't. They get preview notice on things. Um, that's not the only way, uh, certainly. We do have uh, links right out of the software. You can email us. Uh, you can go to our online help, and there's a feedback form there. And we do listen. We don't necessarily get to them same day, next day. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times suggestions come in, and they roll into longer-term planning, but we do eventually get there. Um, they don't disappear. They don't fall between the cracks. That's a great place, by the way. If you have a form that we don't, we don't have in the software, you can go to our online help, provide feedback, request a form, request a new crystal report, that sort of thing. Yeah. It's a great way to get in touch. I think we're probably – kind of crossing over into territory of the second question. But sure. um, could you discuss some accounting specific features that listeners would want to know about? Oh, absolutely. As I mentioned, the last several years have been payroll focused and rightly so that is the bread and butter of what we do, payroll and forms. But I will say one of the biggest feedbacks is on the ease of use in the accounting module. We've heard this this will be the third year, and I'm quite sure we'll hear it again this year. So really, a lot of what we're unveiling this year, like I said, icing on the cake for payroll. But this is what I would, I, I, in my own mind, I think of as year one and a two or three year progression. Mm -hmm. And we're looking to put our accounting module side, you know, shoulder to shoulder with where we're at in payroll. The first and biggest change by request from folks in last year's class is live posting. We do full double entry accounting, of course. Um, at present, the product on the street today, uh, if you are running payroll for employees, maybe you're paying vendors, uh, taking money, in, inbound money from customers in, in accounts receivable, any transactions generated uh, are essentially uh, basically previewed. You, you take a look, you can run interim reports uh, and then you post to the chart of accounts. We, however, had a lot of folks saying, look, that's not the way I want to do this. How, what, you know, go into payables, write a check, and not know what the balance is. Forget I have unposted transactions. Not a good look. Um, we see that. And really, this is one where the, as the software continues to improve, we, we kind of realized um, the way we were doing things traditionally uh, is no longer necessary. So. Uh, in a previous generation of the software, once you post it, that's it. You can go and look at a report to see your journal entries, but you can't see the entries that back a particular account in the chart. There's no easy way to do that. The other thing is there's no, no way to go back. If you've made a data entry error, you're stuck with it. You have to do adjusting entries. That's, that's not good. So the feedback uh, in a prior class was we want a way to view and edit posted entries. And after we worked through the security concerns, built an audit trail to ensure somebody doesn't improve those financials, generate a profit loss and balance sheet, go to the bank, get a loan, <laughs> roll back those entries. We had to have an audit trail. We built that. Um, the current product in the streets, you can go and edit uh, posted entries. You can even edit little known fact prior year entries and they oh. will correctly roll up. So income and expense are zeroed out, rolled up into retained earnings. You can go back and put entries two, three years back uh, post them in and it will correctly update and roll forward. It's, it's an amazing thing. That's very um, amazing. So realizing all that, it, we finally came to the conclusion that we, there's no reason not to do live posting. If you can go back and edit what's already posted, why not have the books up to date to the second? Um, right. So that'd be the biggest improvement. Um, we've also made significant changes to the way we enter 
the way we do data entry right there on the journal screen. So if you're not in live posting mode, then you're uh, in transactions unposted. If you are, um, there's a bulk entry screen so you can go in and just heads down data, data enter. This is another one from the users. Um, if you have a customer giving you bank statements, credit card statements, and all they're looking for is uh, financials reporting, that can be quite the task. Um, so we've changed the way we do bulk entry such that you can literally stare at a piece of paper, bulk enter without hardly looking at the screen, um, really streamline that process, and provided uh, intelligent offsetting. So if you're entering debits, uh, against a cash credit, you know, a bank account, say on a bank statement, you can get to the bottom of the page, look up at the screen, check the total, and make sure you're on track. I personally never really liked the single offset mode we had before. I think the, the multi offset really solves those problems. It's a huge feature. Um, those are two of the biggest, I would say. And another one that's kind of hard to explain, <laughs> but is worth uh, an attempt anyway. Um, often someone will come to you fresh new client and what multi-year financials, prior year comparisons, that sort of stuff. Um, who wants to go and enter journal entries all the way back to 2013, right. nobody. So now what you can do when you're setting up accounts or even after an account is set up, you can go to the, to the detail setup screen for any chart of account account and you can add prior years. <clears throat> you can simply add start of year balances or you can go through and add monthly balances so you can backfill um, not by uh, detail using the journal entry method, but simply summarize months, summarize years, um, and typically prior year comparison charts are showing monthly, so you don't need all the detail underneath. So it's a quick time saver to backfill. Real good stuff. Now, do you allow any kind of uh, direct import of information, maybe from a prior or from a competitor software we do. for those people? We do. We have several uh, that we do direct imports for. Um, but if you're using something a little more niche or say an out of date product, um, we, and we have, we do have customers still hanging on to one, right? Plus the DOS version, <laughs> that sort of thing. Uh, we offer some really great spreadsheet imports. Uh, I like this because one, I love Excel. I, right. I don't know who doesn't. Um, it's just easy. Uh, you can even generate a blank template. So if you want to offload that data entry to your clients, you can hand them an Excel spreadsheet. I would do it securely. We have things like Secure File Pro for just that sort of transaction. Uh, but you can have them enter the financials into a spreadsheet, and then you can import that back in. Now, security is an important consideration. And in the previous episode, I had Jamie Gibson from Drake Software on uh, to talk specifically about security and that was like a 30 minute podcast go Absolutely. watch um, yeah. but uh, what is it specifically that Drake accounting is doing to secure the data that's in the program that these accountants will be uh, using day in and day out well it is a primary concern and I think I think for a lot of accountants uh, especially the smaller practices you know they're aware tangentially head knowledge maybe that they're a, a rich target but they're not aware in reality, day to day. So a lot of what we do um, is education, is to educate folks um, to the value of the data they have. Uh, and then good common sense ways to secure uh, both at rest and in motion that data. That's why I kind of mention and I sort of laugh, but I'm not joking. If you're going to send a spreadsheet to, to an employer and ask them to fill out employees, you know, please, please use something like Secure File Pro to for that transaction. Mm -hmm. um, you're talking uh, personally identifiable data, people's names, dates of birth, social security numbers, that sort of thing. It's an important consideration. Um, one of the big reasons for the rework uh, for Drake Accounting in the first place was security based. We wanted to stay with the latest technology um, and provide the, the safest, most secure storage behind the scenes. So if you actually nose around in your file system, if you're if you're computer savvy, uh, you'll notice there are no extensions to, to our data files. And if you try to open one, good luck. Um, you can tell, just use Notepad, take a look at a client or firm file, and you'll, you'll see real quick it's, it's highly encrypted. Um, we also encrypt uh, the data sort of in motion in the software. You can't simply uh, 
overrun memory and take a look at what's, you know, everything is encrypted as it's being used in the product. And of course, all the transmissions to and from Drake, if you're sending us a client file for diagnostic purposes, um, if you're transmitting uh, those tax liabilities, the 941 or soon, the Social Security, W2, W3, all of that is uh, sent securely, received securely, stored securely, and forwarded on. But I think for most folks, um, it comes down to common sense stuff right there at the accounting firm. Uh, last year, possibly the year before, recently, we'll say, we started requiring logins and they do time out after 15 minutes of inactivity. We've had a few users, you know, at first, hey, this is a slowdown for me. Why does it do this? We explain the security aspect. Mm -hmm. And they generally understand and respect that approach. We want, we want to be good stewards of that information. So, so we do that. Um, another thing we do with the security levels, and this is uh, something I think people often overlook, you know, the information's on a need-to-know basis. So you can have data entry staff who have access to certain screens, but maybe you don't want them posting or producing payrolls, <laughs> sending direct deposits, that sort of thing. So you can actually secure um, the data at a user account level. Um, coming this year, though, and one of the biggest changes for us is to introduce options for multi-factor authentication. That's a big one. I got to think Jamie Gibson covered that. Certainly. Okay, did. absolutely. And I'm, I, stand, I stand with that. This is a really good move. Um, it's something we do at the company. You don't just log in with a username and password because of what we do. Our role is so sensitive. Likewise, uh, there at the accounting firm, you know, these days email is just is just not what it used to be. It's so easy yeah. to get into someone's email. Well, and you receive so many emails, right? Like, oh, absolutely. I get 100 a day. Yeah. And if I go through and just click through each of one of those, I might open myself up to a right. phishing scam. If I'm if I'm half reading, and I would sure. imagine a lot of people do half read their emails. They do. They're busy. Um, usually, tax professionals are busy being professional. Extremely busy. Yeah. <laughs> professionals at what they do. Uh, accounting firms, even payroll processors, bookkeepers, same story. The other thing to say with that is that I think the bad actors out there are getting more sophisticated. So whereas you know, 10 years ago, you get an email that on the surface looked laughable. I've just inherited a million dollars from a rich uncle and all I need to do is pay the taxes. Everyone's heard that story. These days, you'll find folks um, with much more realistic pitches and often they will impersonate someone you know, uh, send a follow up to a legitimate email that's not legitimate, correcting a link that was maybe supposedly sent by mistake. Right. Or pose as a prospective client. <laughs> there you go. To get you to um, click on links for information and data. Absolutely. And like I said, we're an extremely rich target. And what we have found is requiring multi factor. Sorry to interrupt you. No, no. Just in case people did not watch the Jamie Gibson interview. <laughs> Just so a quick thumbnail sketch, yeah. right? As on the outside chance they didn't catch last episode, um, what is multi-factor <laughs> authentication? So basically, uh, what we're looking for is providing an additional, uh, an additional layer of security. So think of it an onion, you're peeling back the layers. Um, so you have your username and password. But like I said, email being what it is, and with most, say, websites, you know, your online bank, stuff like that, what happens if you forget your password? You get an email. So once your email's compromised, and that's the major uh, avenue for malfeasance, they get into the email first and then use the email account to unlock who knows what all out there. So the additional layer, the extra auth step, the extra authentication step, takes one of two forms. One is a hardware, piece of hardware. I actually prefer the hardware. So for those listening, I'm holding up a, uh, a key, a dongle on a keychain. And the other thing is um, I'm holding up my mobile phone for those who are listening, not watching. Uh, and the good news here, so the, both the tax and accounting products will support e either avenue. Um, if you choose to go with something like Microsoft or Google Authenticator, and they both make a software authentication off the cell phone, uh, you'll generate a key code, time-based, right. and then you type that into the software. The reason I said I prefer the, the hardware key, and keep in mind, developers are not lazy, they're efficient. Um, <laughs> you just plug this bad boy in. I have a laptop, I'm on the road a lot. I plug this thing in, there's a little gold circle right there. You tap the gold circle, and it goes ahead and auto-fills out. So the good news is, and we'll just pick on a 
country at random, someone from, say, Luxembourg, gets into my email, oh, great, I have the keys to the kingdom. I'm going to get in. I'm going to get all this financial data, be a rich man, move to Belize, that sort of thing. They get partway in, and then they realize, oh, goodness, he has some sort of hardware authentication sitting on his keychain. So unless you rest this from my fingers, <laughs> um, you're locked out. And that really, uh, I think, like I said, it's had a huge impact. Major firms, I mean, there's a reason that Google and Microsoft themselves have moved away from passwords and into MFA. Mm -hmm. um, this at present, so with a, with a password and either the mobile app or the hardware key is two-factor, but multi-factor is the more correct term. And because each additional layer is another security. factor. Absolutely. Now, uh, just for those at home, uh, you do recommend the physical key. I do. But... Uh, and Jamie Gibson mentioned this in the last podcast. Sure. It doesn't do you a lot of good, though, if you just leave it plugged into the computer the entire time. That's that's a good point. And you'll notice practices. mine's on me. It's not back in my office plugged into the computer. Exactly that's right. a huge no-no mm -hmm. around here and anywhere in your firm as well. You're absolutely right. It's only as good as... Uh, as, as, as you take, as, as you take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Um, I would liken that to the folks and it happens. Uh, you pick up a keyboard and what do you see? A post-it note with a password. <laughs> yeah. I mean that there it is, you know? So if you're, if you're the post-it note type and you're going to leave this plugged in, I would probably recommend you go with the cell phone. And we feel um, your pain though. Cause I mean, people who do want to put those passwords under the keyboards oh, yeah. because now you're required to have an individual password for each account. Yep. That's right. And the reason being, if you use the same password in your email that you use on, I don't know, your bank account. Unfortunately, people do. That's way too right. many. And that's then right. they have the keys to every kingdom that right you could there. possibly have uh, control And that's over. why I'm back to like an MFA. Yeah. If you're the type who's going to use that, you've, you've memorized this password or maybe a set of them since you have mm -hmm. to rotate passwords and use them all across the spectrum, the hardware key is going to help you a whole lot. We've covered some security stuff. Um, we've covered over basically the major uh, features people can expect in 2020. But what about the audience, maybe those tax professionals uh, who are just looking to dip their toes maybe into offering accounting services or uh, just even maybe smaller accounting offices? Yeah. Does Drake Accounting have a product that can uh, help those potential customers, those prospects? Absolutely, yeah. I, I would say really in our own customer base, um, being primarily traditionally a tax company, mm -hmm. you know, a, a lot of our users are tax practices. And one common, one extremely common usage of the product is to generate payroll for that office. Mm -hmm. So they're not actually doing year round accounting, they're not doing payroll or bookkeeping. It's for their shop and the bundle discounts are so generous. Honestly, if you're gonna buy the tax product, the add on to, to power bundle, I think, I think it, I think it's worth it right there mm -hmm. just to do your own payroll. And of course, we offer direct deposits. You can print blank Micker, so it's a fairly uh, fully featured payroll product. So we also offer um, for precisely those types of firms uh, a forms only product, about half the price of the full product. Uh, it is essentially a Swiss Army knife for forms. Um, huge at the price point. The other thing I'd say, you know, you're talking about folks looking to dip the toe into accounting or into, say, full service payroll, right. uh, maybe doing payables and receivables for an employer, for a company, uh, possibly just bookkeeping after the fact, write up style bookkeeping. One of the things that you just can't overemphasize is our honest pricing. Yeah. Now, you see the ads out there, 249 this, $500 that. Um, we talk to customers, we listen to them. Like I said, I went out on a sales seminar tour. Uh, we hold the developer class. And the consistent feedback I get from customers um, is that's not the reality. You end up often spending two or $3,000 because you do payroll over five employees. You know, the verticals kill you. Um, here, we develop quality products, we provide better support and we have honest pricing. So to me, if you're looking to branch out, if you're even considering it, what I can assure you is the price you see is what you pay. And inside of that structure, um, you have unlimited usage. So for the same folks I just mentioned who might wanna start by doing their own payroll, 
You know, I'm running a tax practice. I've decided maybe it's better if I generate my own paychecks, handle my own quarterly tax deposits, do my end of year filings. I'm a tax professional after all, right? right. I should be able to handle that. Um, they're pleased to discover that once they get the rhythm on that and decide to branch out, that we're not going to charge them by the number of clients they have, by the number of employees those employers have, by whether or not they want to e-file. <clears throat> and in all honesty, the only vertical we have, we do partner for direct deposit. So that has a fee structure. That's not us. That's our. That's the partner uh, in the industry. Outside of that, it's unlimited usage. And the bulk e-filing that's coming for the Social Security Administration, again, on the house. You know, you use the product, you buy the product. What you see is what you get price-wise. So to me, you know, the professional product pays for itself, list or discounted in a power bundle. Uh, the forms edition for those who are strictly not interested in payroll, payables, receivables, write-up capabilities out of the accounting module. They just want forms. That's what it's there for. Uh, and one of the things I, I think people are still wrapping their heads around it, um, the legacy product only ever did on the fly federal forms. The new product does all those state wage and labor forms. So uh, any department of revenue, any department of labor, yeah. Uh, and if we don't have your form, the sooner you tell us, the sooner we'll get it into the product. Um, I suppose there's another one where I'm plumb crazy to say it, but in another taxing subjects unveiling, um, we're looking closely uh, at local forms. So in the state of Ohio, uh, Rita, CCH, Columbus, um, we're, we're making moves in that direction. That's Right now, which is unheard of, <laughs> but that's really where we're at, and that's I think my pitch to someone who is either primarily a tax practice, or perhaps branching out a, a you know brand new practice, um, pound for pound, it's worth it at the price. Um, it is honest pricing, and I think it's um, I, I think given the feature set and given what's on the horizon, that to me it's a no brainer. So. Yeah. Now, now, as we close out for the day, sure. you mentioned pricing. Where would someone go to look at the pricing for Drake Accounting or the bundle with Drake Tax? Sure. Uh, where would I go? Either the main site. Uh, I do know we have a rotating banner there and links from the main www.drakesoftware.com. Uh, accounting has its own site, accounting.drakesoftware.com. I would start there. Um, I think that'd be a great place to start. You can download uh, a free trial of the product kick the tires, see what you think, uh, and give us feedback. Yeah. Like I said, we're, we're only ever here to listen and build a stronger product. Um, when I went up to Cincinnati, I was pretty honest with the folks who showed up. I figured they'd know soon anyway. I'm not a salesman. This is not a sales pitch. I came up so you could hear my voice, look me in the eye, shake my hand, and believe me when I tell you, we've been thinking about you and your local taxes for a long time. Yeah. And we knew that was a place where we didn't have a lot of saturation with the legacy product due to the local taxes. Um, we're able to handle those, and we're looking forward to growing in that market. Kentucky has localities. Well, Jay, thanks again for being here. We really appreciate it. It's always good to get information from the horse's mouth on what's new in Drake Accounting. Absolutely. Good to be seen and heard, and I do appreciate it. All right. That'll be it for this episode of the Tax and Subjects podcast. We'll see you all next time.